Steph Curry is the greatest shooter of all time and it's not even close. His shooting form is different and it's revolutionized the way people think about shooting mechanics and the entire game of basketball and how many threes we shoot. I'm gonna break down for you every single thing about his shooting form from start to finish, head to toe, including some unique things that you've probably never seen anyone break down about his shot. Let's get started. First thing that's kind of interesting about his shot is the way he starts with the basketball. Usually he's gonna have it slightly in front of his right hip. He's a right-handed shooter right here and he's gonna have it slightly towards the inside of that hip, not to the side where a lot of coaches would teach players to have it. He's also going to have the wrist either not flexed or very slightly flexed. Now most coaches and trainers will teach players to have it in front of that shooting side hip or slightly to the outside of it and to have that wrist bent back. And the reason coaches teach this is because they feel like it's going to help you get under the ball better to get better range and arc and keep the shot more aligned. So that right there makes Curry's shot kind of unique. One thing you will notice though is that elbow is tucked in pretty well. It's not always necessarily touching his hip, but it's pretty close to it. So he does have that elbow in. But Curry does something a little unorthodox as he brings the ball up. We'll talk more about that later. On a lot of his shots, you'll also see him, if he catches the ball here, he'll dip it down to that position to get into his shot. You'll also notice that he's typically gonna have the ball tight to the hip here and throughout the motion of the shot. We'll talk more about as he brings the ball up a little bit later though. If you're trying to improve your shot in game situations, I got a free workout for you pinned to the comments. If he has time to set up for a shot, like in a free throw or easier more open shot he's usually going to have his right foot slightly forward because that's his shooting side foot and he's going to have his feet tilted slightly to the left bringing that right shoulder forward now you'll even see him in some instructional videos say 10 toes to the basket meaning toes facing right to the hoop and exactly squared but the film does not lie if you watch his feet they are tilted and the shooting side foot is forward this helps get that shooting side hip elbow and shoulder forward and aligned with the hoop for a more accurate shot you'll notice if the feet are going straight the hoop is not going to be in the center of where you're aiming. But if I get the feet slightly tilted and the shooting foot forward, you'll notice how, boom, that puts the hoop right in the middle. And as far as width with his feet, they're usually going to be about sh almost exactly shoulder width apart, not much wider, not much more narrow, right about here. Now the foot positioning will change a lot when he's in motion. We'll talk more about that in detail a little bit later, but a lot of times when he's driving right, if he needs to get that shot off quicker, he'll stop dead here and have his feet in kind of an awkward, unusual position. And there'll even be times when he stops with his feet either wider or more narrow than his preferred typical shooting position. When he's moving more to the left, he's usually gonna get that right foot a little bit more forward and closer to his typical shooting position. Another thing that makes Curry's shot unique is it's a one motion shot. Now I'm trying to do this righty, I'm a lefty, so bear with the poor mechanics. But a lot of players are gonna have a pause right around here in their shot, right around their eye line, head height about. Curry doesn't really pause there, he goes straight through all the way into the shot in one continuous motion. This allows him to get the shot off quicker, making him harder to block. He also gets a nice high arcing shot because of that. And it allows him to get more range because since it's one fluid motion and there's no stop, it's got more power into it. By going all one motion, it allows him to maximize the energy coming from his legs. Versus if you came up, extended the legs and then paused here, all that energy was there and then you're pausing and then that energy is gone and then you're using almost all arm. So him using one motion is a big key of why his shot is different and why it's so effective. And another thing you'll notice is there is almost a brief semi pause or slowing down right around here. Whereas most players, again, they're gonna have it more here. He's gonna have it more right around chin height and then bring that ball up quicker. So ball is going to come right to that chin, slow down just a bit, and then keep moving quickly. And there'll be times where he'll slow down a little here and other times where he doesn't at all. It just depends on how quick he's trying to get that shot off, how much range he needs to get, and the game situation. Now as he's bringing the ball up, something unique happens with his shot. Like we said before, his hands are a little bit more on the side, not completely in front of the ball or behind it. And as he brings it up, it's going to be pretty tight to the body as mentioned before, and his palm's going to rotate to get under it right around as the ball is getting up to head height. And even there, he doesn't have his pointer or middle finger aligned to the hoop, which is what most coaches teach. It's almost just as he's getting the ball above head height that boom, that alignment starts happening. And then he finishes the shot with those fingers aligned. Another thing about Curry's shot that you might think is unique, but actually most players do, is there's no gap really between his palm. Now there's gonna be like a very slight one where you can maybe barely get a finger a little bit of the way in there, but you're not gonna be able to just slide it through like this, where if you had a really forced big gap. Now he's even said in some instructional videos to get that gap there and it's really important. But if you watch him and just about any shooter shoot, the base of the palm on the sides, there's going to be contact with the basketball. And yes, he is mainly focusing on using his fingers to control it. And most players, that's what they're going to do. But that being said, the ball being on the palm isn't necessarily a bad thing. And there will be a small natural gap, but it's usually not something that's all that forced. And then yes, of course, as the ball is rolling off the fingers, that gap will form because that's what has to happen for it to roll off your fingers. It can't be touching your palm and rolling off your fingers at the same time. So here's a few details about a shot. I haven't seen too many people break down. When he's driving right, typically when you're moving right, your body's facing this way. And 
then usually you're gonna end up with your left foot closer to the hoop. He's no exception on this, and a lot of times he'll try to get his shot off quick in a game situation. He won't get his feet aligned that he normally would. I mentioned that earlier, but one thing that's unique is he'll jump a little higher when he has his feet in that position, especially when he's moving to the right. His feet will be in that position, and because of that, he's gonna need to jump higher because he's gonna use that air time to get this shooting side foot to kick forward. And when he's going left, he doesn't need to do that as much because naturally that right foot will be forward to begin with. But there's going to be a big degree of variation from shot to shot when he's driving right. You'll see sometimes he'll really kick that foot far forward. Sometimes he'll twist. Sometimes he'll land in a really good normal stance that most coaches would teach you to land in. But almost all the time when he's moving to the right and he's trying to get that shot off quick, he's going to jump higher. There's going to be a little bit of a leg kick and he's going to turn a little more in the air to get that shooting hip aligned. When he's further from the three-point line, you'll also see him jump a little bit more, a little bit higher to get some more range and power in the shot because he's using more legs. On those shots, you'll also see him jump and land a little bit further forward than he normally would. On wide open threes where he has time to set up his feet or a lot of times when he's driving left, what you'll see with his landing is that it's typically just slightly forward he doesn't jump a lot and he's gonna land in a nice balanced stance about shoulder width apart very similar to the way he started the shot a lot of that comes back to him having the foot position he needs to start the shot if he has it to start he's usually gonna land more in one spot and more balanced another thing you'll see a change depending on the shot is if he needs to get more range he's gonna get more hip bend and with that obviously a bigger jump it's all about speed synchronization and rhythm if he needs to get the shot up even faster he won't bend nearly as much in the legs and when he's shooting from further there's gonna be more knee bend and jump another thing that that's unique about Curry's shot is what some people will say that he has a thumb flick. Now if you watch really closely, on some shots it looks like there is a slight thumb flick, meaning the guide hand thumb will flick the basketball. However, it's usually going to happen before he actually ends up releasing the ball with the shooting hand, which is what most coaches teach is that you want to release that ball with the shooting hand, the guide hand's just there to help bring the ball up. There'll be varying levels of how much the thumb flicks, and it could influence the shot if maybe he flicks too much, maybe the ball goes off to the side or whatever the case may be. However, I think this kind of plays into boom that palm rotation that we talked about on the shooting hand earlier. I think it's helping him get that shooting hand, index finger or middle finger aligned to the hoop. And more often than not, what it looks like he's doing is trying to pin that thumb to his hand. Sometimes it's a little bit more of a flick and his palm faces forward, but more often than not, he'll have that palm facing sideways. But instead of pinning the thumb here, he has it kind of down here. And that creates a little bit of that flicking action like that. On the release, it's usually gonna be that middle finger that's last to touch the basketball, and it's also the one that will be in the middle of the basketball. Since it is the last one, that's the one you want aligned to the middle of the hoop, which is what he does. But again, for him, he doesn't get that finger aligned until just above the ball gets to his head height. Again, this is not the way most coaches train players to shoot. I'm not saying it's the reason, or any of these things are the reason why his shot are, is great or works better. Well, some of them, but like things like this that are a little more unorthodox, it, it might contribute. I'm not saying you should necessarily copy it, but it is something unique to his shot. Another Another thing we got to talk about with Curry is that follow through or the lack thereof. On some shots, he's really going to hold that follow through. Other times, he's going to pull that arm back real fast. And sometimes he's just going to kind of let it drop down and come back. He's not nearly as consistent with holding it like most coaches would prefer players do. I think a lot of this just comes back to him getting a lot of repetition, but also feel. I think sometimes pulling that arm back just makes the shot feel quicker and more natural for him. So I think a lot of it is sort of a feel thing from him getting thousands of repetitions in, which obviously is a big key for him being such a great shooter. So if you're trying to be a great shooter like Curry, you got to get some practice in too. And again, I got that free workout for you pinned to the comments. That same workout helped me improve my shooting fast and score a lot more in games. And if you want to see more about perfect shooting form, check out this video right here.